I'm here to tell you today that there's a very good chance that you don't know Jesus. You say, oh no, I, I know about Jesus. Well, I, I kind of doubt that. I'm going to share with you three lies that are spoken of the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, if you fall into one of, believe in one of these lies, then I'll tell you right now, you don't know Jesus according to the scriptures. Let me tell you the three lies. Number one, they say, Jesus liked to hang out with sinners. You'll hear that. Jesus liked to hang out with sinners. I'll show you why people believe that here in just a minute. Number two, Jesus never judged anyone. Did you ever hear that one? Jesus never judged anybody. Number three, Jesus came to bring peace. Now, instead of me giving my opinions and saying, well, I feel that I think that I, get, you know, I've always been, no, 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 no. Let's actually turn in our Bibles and see what does the Bible say? You see, I can make up anything I want about Jesus Christ, but when it comes down to it, there has to be a standard that says who he really was. And if you are not basing your truth on God's truth, on the scriptures, then you're being lied to and deceived. See, I, I'm, I could stand here and I could tell you things and say, the Bible says, the Bible says, but I'm actually telling you, hey, stop this video and get a King James Bible. Don't mess with the new ones. They come from the Vatican. The Vatican is satanic. Okay, get a King James Bible. You can get, look it up online if you have to, if you don't have one physically present that you can get in your possession. I mean, you can get them at a dollar store. Here's one. This is a dollar store Bible, King James Bible. You can look this stuff up for yourself or you can get it online. Okay, but look it up. Look at the scriptures yourself. Read it and see if you've been lied to about Jesus Christ. Because if you believe any of those three things there, you don't know Jesus. Turn your King James Bible to the New Testament, to the book of Matthew, chapter 11. Hey, Jesus, you know, he liked to hang out with sinners. Okay, let's see about that. Matthew, chapter 11, verses 19 through 20. Jesus speaking here, he says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, He didn't say, they say, his enemies. Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. Jesus is saying, those that are saved, spiritual people, they're the ones that are wise, right? And they're not going to fall for these lies about me. Jesus never said, I am the friend of publicans and sinners. His enemies said that about him. You know, and some of you people will try to say that I'm the Pharisee because I'm talking about scriptures and I'm attacking what you think is Jesus. Now, the fact of the matter is the Pharisees were the ones that were saying that Jesus is a friend of the publicans and sinners. Let me show you what else Jesus said. Verse 20, Then began he to abrade the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done because they repented not. Hmm. Turn to Mark chapter 2, the very next book. Matthew, Mark, Mark chapter 2, verse 15 and 17, or 15 through 17, excuse me. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, many publicans and sinners sat also together with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many, and they followed him. See, he hung out with sinners, right? Keep reading. And when the scribes and Pharisees saw him eat with publicans and sinners, they said unto his disciples, Who is, who is it that that he eateth and drinketh with, how, excuse me, how is it, excuse me, that he eateth and drinketh with publicans and sinners? Remember, there were the ones that came out and said, he's a friend of publicans and sinners. He's a friend of the wicked and stuff like this. You know, and here people now say, well, Jesus would be hanging out at the bar and Jesus would be, you know, wherever, hanging out with sinners. It's the Pharisees that were ones that were saying that. Look at what Jesus says. Why were these people with him? What was the point of it? When Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, They that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The reason Jesus Christ was with those people is because they were sick and tired of their life of sin, and they wanted help. They weren't there saying, Oh, cool, Jesus. Hey, Jesus, come on in. Have a drink. Sit down. No, no. They were saying, I'm sick of this life. I'm sick and tired of the drugs. I'm sick and tired of the sex. I'm sick and tired of the alcohol. I'm sick and tired of this, this life. I need something different. But you see, the religious Pharisees, the people that held their traditions above Scripture, 
the ones that said, well, I feel that I think that, and they didn't show you what to believe out of this book. Those people were saying, oh, look at him, look, oh, because you see, they didn't feel that they needed Jesus Christ. They were self-righteous, just like a lot of you people are out there. You say, what about you, Brian? I'm a sinner. I came to Jesus Christ sick and tired of my life. And I put my faith in what he did on the cross to pay for my sins. Not, well, somebody else did this bad thing to me in my past and it, was, it wasn't my fault. No, 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 no. My sins, my messed up life. And until you come to that point when you say, you know what, I'm sick and tired of my life and I have sinned against God and if I got judged by God for my life, there isn't any kind of good works outweighing the bad or something. No, I'm going to go to hell and I'm going to burn because of what I've done. Are you sick of your sin? You want to go hang out with Jesus? Get in the presence of a perfect man that doesn't sin and that hates sin? What are you, what are you going to do? Tell him some dirty jokes that you heard? You really want to hang out with Jesus? I do. I'm a sinner. I need help. And he helped me. Changed my life. And he can change your life. But only if you drop your self-righteous pride and come to him as the sinner that you are. Quit trying to hide. He knows it all anyhow. Number two, Jesus never judged anyone. Do you hear that one? You know, Jesus didn't judge people. Yes, he did. John chapter 8. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Well, my priest never told me this stuff. And I, and I, I went to seminary and I was never told this stuff. What's the Bible say? You can have people tell you all kinds of stupid nonsense. What does the Bible say? John chapter 8, verse 12 through 19. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me not, or followeth me, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said unto him, Thou bearest record of thyself; thy record is not true. Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came, and whither I go. But ye cannot tell whence whence I come, and whither I go. Ye judge after the flesh; I judge no man. You say, well, See, right there it is. Keep reading. Verse 16. And yet, if I judge, my judgment is true. For I am not alone, but I am the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that bear witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then said they unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. Yeah. Jesus is saying, I'm not going to be just judge you, judging you according to your flesh. Jesus doesn't come up to somebody and say, you're going to hell because you're ugly. You're going to hell because you're fat. You're going to hell because you're too wealthy or too poor. Or something. That's not Jesus. Jesus comes up and says, you're a sinner. I'm not. You want me to pay for your sins? Well, it's okay. I got it. I can take care of it. You see, the judgment that Jesus Christ brings upon you is a judgment saying, okay, just like a doctor comes along and he says, you know what? I got some bad news for you. We found a tumor. Does that ruin your day? Yes, it does. But you know what that doctor is trying to do? He's trying to tell you there's a tumor and I can cure you. I have something I can do so that you don't have to die. That's what Jesus Christ does. That's what his judgment is all about. His judgment is he's trying to help you out of those sins that are messing your life up. You say, what about John chapter 3, verse 16? John 3, 16. Let's go there. John 3, 16 through verse 21. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. You say, well, since see, he's not judging. He's not condemning me. I can do my thing. 
But how often has your uh, thing that you like to do, how often has it gotten you into trouble? What's the judgment all about? You see? Let's continue. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that light is coming into the world and men loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. That's why you don't like to think about Jesus judging you. Because you just haven't given up on those things yet. The sex and the drugs and the alcohol and the rock music and the wicked entertainment and things like that. You don't want to give it up. And you don't like me shining the light of God's word upon you. You don't like that. Yes, Jesus did judge people. But his judgment was there to help you have a life that you can live, that you don't have to suffer with the sins of the flesh and the wicked things that you do that you just get stuck in and you get addicted to and it just wrecks your life. You know, when you get to that point, you know, when you're young, you know, and stuff, and you're out there and you're fornicating, and fornicate means having sex outside of marriage, okay, if you don't understand that. Uh, you're doing drugs, you're maybe a little bit experimenting with it, just experimenting, and, and you, you know, get drunk, you know, really drunk sometimes, and it's all fun and games. But as you start to get older, you start to kind of hurt a little bit more, and, and uh, then you start to get some sickness and some disease, and all of a sudden you start to realize, uh, my life is falling apart. And pretty soon you start to feel like you're on a train, a runaway train, and there's a bridge out up ahead, and you realize I'm going full speed and I'm going to die before long unless something happens, unless something changes. Welcome to the judgment of God. The judgment that comes down there and says, okay, I want to make a little checklist, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and that's wrong. I can help you out with that problem. You want salvation? You want me to save you from those problems? You need help? See what the judgment's about? It's not just to condemn you because God hates you and stuff like this and whatever else and He just wants to burn you. If He wanted to do that, He'd just go, bam, you're dead. Go to hell. As soon as you sin, dead, hell. He doesn't want to do that. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Third, Jesus came to bring peace. Okay? Luke chapter 2. Right now we're entering into the Christmas season again and people sing, you know, Joy to the world, the Lord is come. You know, talk about peace. Let's read about that. Luke chapter 10, or excuse me, Luke chapter 2, verses 10 through 14. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. You say, see, Jesus Christ came to bring peace. He said, what's this, this judgment stuff? And, and quit cramming your religion down my throat. And yeah, I've heard it all, you know. I used to say some of it myself as a lost man. But you see, peace on earth does not come before glory to God in the highest. You want to have uh, the knowledge of the Lord and, and things, beginning of wisdom? The Bible says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You give glory to God in the highest. And then you get peace on earth. Why is there so much war and fighting and everything else? Because people don't give God the glory. When's the last time you were thankful for the air that you breathe and the food that you eat and the water that you drink or, you know, whatever, your health, your money, the fact that you got clothes on your back? When was the last time you gave glory to God for that? Most people are atheists when it comes to this whole thing. You say, well, I don't profess to be an atheist. You might not profess to be an atheist, but do you, in practice... Do you deny Jesus Christ? Do you deny God's existence with your life? How often do you really thank Him? 
You don't give glory to God in the highest, therefore you don't have peace. The Bible said there is no peace to the wicked. Matthew chapter 10. One more scripture to turn to. Matthew chapter 10. And the less peace, or excuse me, less glory people give to God, the less peace we see on this earth. Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 39. Jesus speaking here, he says, Think not that I am come to send peace on the earth. On earth, I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foes shall be they of his own household. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. He that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. What Jesus Christ is saying there is, if you want any kind of peace, you're not going to have to, you're going to have to quit caring what people think about you, including your own family members. It's going to be war when you come along and you say, you know what, I came to the end of myself. I'm no longer self-righteous. And they say, oh, come on, whatever your name is, you're not that bad. You're a good guy. You're a good son. You're a good grandson. You're a good dad. And you have to look him right in the face and say, no, I'm not. Jesus Christ is good. Jesus Christ is righteous. I'm going to give glory to God in the highest so that I can have peace in my life on this earth. Boy, that's going to cause some problems, won't it? People that you know down at work, what are they going to say? Friends from high school, your college, university, whatever, acquaintances of any kind. Because see, you're going to be coming along and you're going to be saying, you know what, Jesus Christ saved me, I'm a sinner. And so are you. You're a sinner as well. And you need to be saved by Jesus Christ. And you're going to get attacked then with all the don't cram the religion down my throat. Jesus didn't judge people. You know, Jesus hung out with sinners and stuff like that. Yeah. You better get saved. Or just continue. Continue in your path of sin. Continue in your life of sin. And uh, just keep telling yourself it'll be all right. It'll be all right. You know, I'm 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 going to be okay. I just just keep enjoying my sin here. Or you can come to the end of yourself and say, you know what? I need help. I don't want this life anymore. And you can find out about God and about the Lord Jesus Christ. Get a King James Bible. Don't mess with the other ones. They're false translations. They purposefully changed this book. Get a King James Bible and read it. Read it for yourself. Don't believe me. Read it for yourself. 